The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your host. And of course, it doesn't matter where me is as long as me and you are here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we're off. Uh, well, let me update this because I know everything's moving fairly quickly. Uh, we're off 118 points on the S&P cash. Dow's uh, down 688. Uh, Nasdaq's off 415. Russell's down 65. Um, so, yeah, the Nasdaq, uh, Russell 2000, the worst performers. Uh, when we last left, I was looking for a fairly decent test of 3850. We blew through that this morning in the futures. I was I was thinking maybe you go and blow it out and then come back uh, before the market opened. Never got that. So we're looking for you know the big signal would be some kind of a close on lighter volume back above 3850. I don't think we're going to get that till maybe Wednesday. So we're going to have to watch the volume closely. Uh, as we speak now, we're doing about 9 billion shares, which is a good day. But again, we had about 18 billion shares. So we're only doing about half that number for the big blowout. Does that mean we could, as we talked last week, have a market that's uh, probably best described as a paper cut? That is, uh, it doesn't look that big. I mean, maybe it's big. We're not talking a tiny paper cut. We're talking a big one. The ones that really are painful, uh, and uh, no matter what you do, they just keep bleeding, and they stop bleeding for a minute, and then they start bleeding again. Um, I think we could have that into Wednesday. I'll be watching very closely uh, the uh, uh, trend numbers for the uh, Amex to see whether or not uh, the uh, retail traders have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. I suspect we're going to see something like a 0.2, maybe a 0.25 today at the close. And, of course, I watch that one very closely because it's nothing but ETFs. And they're older ETFs, too. So they tend to be the not so much leverage and uh, not so much uh, reverse. So they tend to be a fairly good indicator of the larger ETFs. Uh, in that. So anyway, uh, let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, besides the obvious, which everybody's talked about, after the bell tonight, we've got earnings for Oracle. Uh, probably not a night to disappoint. Uh, Adobe on Thursday night, but other than that, not a lot in the way of news. Of course, this is options expiration week, uh, and that leads back to back into a three-day weekend. Uh, and I will honor to look something up just so I didn't say anything untoward or uh, misinformation. Uh, but certainly we've got the June meeting of the Fed on the 14th and the 15th. And that's where I'm thinking that if we're going to get anything, it's going to be the 15th. Uh, last Thursday during the show, I was starting to get worried about what was going on. Wasn't exactly sure what happened. Uh, but it looked, uh, or at least uh, today, I'm going to say I'm going to vote for the Fed was out rumoring uh, to the big guys on Wall Street uh, that they could go up as much as one whole percent at this meeting. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure if they did that just because the market was hanging up at highs and they wanted to spook it a little bit before the meeting and only give us a, a half a percent. Or maybe uh, kind of like you hit somebody hard and you go, oh, I really didn't mean it. And maybe they just give you a three quarter of a percent. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, 
of uh, problems with going long, I think, before the meeting results at 2 and then the uh, the uh, uh, results, uh, I mean the uh, press conference, which goes from 2.30 to 3.15 Eastern time. And so I don't see a lot in the next two days that makes me think a lot of people are going to get brave and uh, decide to go lay down on some train tracks hoping that a train comes along and carries them away. But uh, that's just I. I don't see much out, out happening. Uh, we could see, I think, a continued weakness in gold uh, through Wednesday. And, you know, for me, I've been waiting for 1775-ish. Uh, on the uh, gold contract, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but uh, generally I tend to buy gold only when there's blood running in the streets for gold. Uh, but uh, eh, that is just I. I know other people more actively trade it. I wait until literally I think that there couldn't be or most probably wouldn't be any lower. But I would ideally love to see almost vapor volume at 1775 in gold and think that maybe we've seen a bottom in that but uh, we I do digress anyway looking for volume now uh, uh, for this show I've got a whole list of stocks that I've got set up uh, yeah, you think 1660 on gold I don't think so um, I'm thinking you'd really have to bust 1775 fairly hard, uh, Jay. Not thinking that much, but you know maybe maybe it'd be the blow off of a century. But uh, again, I'm waiting for some kind of sign. I'm not uh, forecasting. I am going to react down there either by doing nothing or buying it. But uh, that would be me. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's see what else do we have here going on. I think that's it. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, generally, um, I don't think that there's a lot of reasons to think that even if this is a false breakout or excuse me breakdown, and we don't get the volume we need, it probably will take until Wednesday uh, to get something turned around, and maybe even Thursday or Friday. So not surprised, uh, start looking and knowing the three-day weekend is coming. If someone is sitting on a massive uh, downside, maybe that will be the impotence for them to cover going into the three-day weekend, thinking, hey, we've made a lot of money, so we'll go ahead and cover. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, one of the other things is I don't have it yet, but the bi-monthly short sell numbers will be coming out tonight. Uh, and I'll start uh, downloading and looking at those. And that'll help me out a little bit going into options expiration. This is quad witching. Why it has gotten much better over the last year. Quad witching still tends to be much more volatile than all the other witchings, or than uh, option expiration. So we got kind of a perfect storm out here of the market moving low. Good volume, but not enough for a blowout. Possible reversal. Fed meeting to drag this out to at least Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday into a three-day weekend. Well, you couldn't ask for more action, I don't think. Later. This week. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Always like to do a little bit of history. Why it doesn't actually repeat, it does tend to rhyme. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1983, the NASA space probe Pioneer 10 crosses the orbit of Neptune, becoming the first man made object to leave our solar system. It was launched on March 2nd, 1972, toward the red star Alderbaran which forms the eye of the constellation Taurus. The uh, last uh, content, uh, contact with Pioneer 10 was on January 23rd, 2003. And, of course, uh, we've got five different probes that have left the building, like Elvis, uh, left the solar system. Uh, the only thing that's probably of interest in that is that at the speed they're going, it will be 40,000 years before they are out one light year. So, hey, we've got a couple of messages and a bottle out there. But uh, we'll see. 1983, and of course, just in the last few years, two more and much faster. But uh, still, 40,000 years to one light year. Uh, we just really, I, it's for a human, almost impossible to understand the vastness of space. Okay, what else do we have going on? Uh, going to go back to a lot of charts. Again, you can call me at 877-927-6648. Age it, uh, six, four, what is it? 877-927-6648. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and start looking at some stuff uh, right off the bat. Uh, are we going to have any kind of potential low? And the answer is Maybe. Uh, right now, we've got the ARC funds, uh, the May 12th low that we're retesting today, $35.10. We're still a buck above, a, a buck above that, uh, but only 23.6 million shares so far. I think that's probably the one that caught my, uh, piqued my interest the most, other than the fact you, you have two gap downs, and I wouldn't buy it for that reason. My guess is that 
if we are going to find some kind of low this week, you're going to get one more gap down on the ARC funds along with the rest of the NASDAQ uh, high flyers. And then that may go ahead and fill itself during that day, get back above 35 bucks and into the trading range for the weekend. So is there a lot there? No, but there are some signs that we could see uh, some movement. So let's just go through as many of these as we can so far today because they do tell a story. Uh, Apple uh, making a little hammer candle down here at the low. 132.61 was the May 20th low with 137 million shares. We're doing about half that right now with 72 million shares. Airbnb. When we look at this one, it's going into an extremely long-term gap that goes back years. What is it? Uh, do I have it even farther? I don't know what. Uh, eh, got a gap there for something. Don't know why I can't get it back farther than that. Let's see if we can't uh, do this. See if there's anything better. No? Doesn't look like it. I don't know where that gap comes from. It's probably the opening uh, day that we're just catching on the edge there. Uh, as we said, uh, was it Adobe on Thursday night? Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, the May 12th low on this one, $370 uh, with 4 million shares. A uh, little doji candle out here with 2.5 million so far. AMD. Also getting ready to retest its previous lows. Again, we could have, I think, especially in the tech sector, I wouldn't be surprised to try to see some kind of blowout, uh, even on these lighter volumes. $83.27 on the March or May 12th low, 130 million shares. Uh, we're into that candle today with 68 million shares. So let's say that we end up with 90 million shares or 92. That's still going to be a far cry from 129 million shares. Uh, a lot of people talking about the uh, impending doom of Amazon. Uh, the previous uh, 101.26 low at 100 million shares on May 24th uh, uh, is now being tested with 64 million shares. So maybe that ends up being 80 before the end of the day. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, Boeing, or I'm not going, uh, certainly coming back uh, to this gap uh, that goes back a whole lot of uh, time, back to 2020, that March blowout lows. Anyway, you have a gap up from the 24th of March 2020 on the pandemic low. Uh, that came up on 43 million shares. You're back into that gap today with 11 million shares. So uh, far from being incredibly bearish out here, I'm just hoping that the market doesn't take off and gap up without me. But at the same time, I know that we could see 100 points down and reverse that in the same day uh, with the little trading bots out there that decide our future. Uh, other uh, stocks of interest, uh, a lot of people talking down Chipotle today. Volume's about the same as the previous lows out here. This is one that doesn't look as rosy as some of the others. Not exactly sure what's going on on it. Well off the almost $2,000 high down to 12 uh, 13 today. And, of course, the, uh, the error uh, giving a gift uh, of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, just brutal. I don't think that there's any stopping it, even if the markets probably pop up. Uh, Bitcoin probably has a lot lower down. Uh, just the thought of uh, going long uh, Bitcoin and buying it, uh, even $5 worth, makes me feel a little dirty. And uh, eh, if you're thinking about how dirty, well, if a, uh, if a one is a David Cronenberg for, uh, film, kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, The Fly something like that, something that was kind of disgusting. Or uh, on the extreme high end, the human centipede, uh, where uh, you really just want to have your eyes removed for the rest of your life. Uh, that being a 10, I'm going to say that uh, I've got probably about a 7 or an 8 bad feeling right now on, uh, on Bitcoin. 
So I'm thinking you're going to a full 10 on this thing. Uh, now, that being said, uh, some of the things out here are not looking as bad as I would feel. And that is certainly the $40.83 low of May 12th out here with 58 million shares being attacked by only 22 million shares. So not as bad as one might think. <laughs> Uh, amber drops. Ooh, we're going deep here. Uh, Crocs, uh, the shoe that only a turtle could love. Um, going back into two million with 1.4. I don't see any reason that this is going to be all that exciting come this week. But uh, a lot of talk about it on the uh, financial infotainment cable channels. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, we'll look at some other stuff. Uh, crowd strike uh, down today into a candle that had 5.5 million shares with 4 million. So uh, I don't know there's a whole lot, but yeah, could this be an ABC up if the market turns on Friday? One of the better ones, it's certainly not back down at the lows, but I'm thinking that you got, probably got to get about 145 uh, before you find uh, the start of a possible ABC. Uh, in the previous show with Steve, uh, Signig CYN had a nice pop. We were talking about a lot of rumors on this one uh, coming around uh, Qualcomm, which we'll look at in a little bit. But uh, Some decent volume out here for the penny stocks. 
Okay. Dock you. Uh, finally, almost back to this big gap higher. This gap higher goes back to the 6th of August of 2019 when uh, I was playing this. And I think in the Tech Insider, we bought it a couple of times, made some good money off of it. Probably should have held it, but it had some wicked moves in it. Uh, and I uh, wasn't willing to give up a huge score at the time for a much larger possible lot, much larger score. Of course, that really came into the pandemic. Um, and who's going to see that going forward? Anyway, that's a 25 million share pop. Now, what do we have here? Almost down there at 11 and a half million shares. But uh, I would say this about that. And then I won't say any more about it. That'll be all I have to say about that. Uh, is uh, Amazon? Amazon went from 110 bucks to 10 bucks. Now, if these companies can make it through the other side, a lot of times there's some fairly decent long-term gains on it. And let's say it's uh, 60 bucks now ish. You get to 125 bucks on this thing, uh, just on a dead cat bounce. That's 100. percent There's probably or there, let me put it there. There is the potential for some decent, uh, even dead cat bounces over the next couple of years uh, for things that you may want to hold longer uh, than a New York second. Of course, uh, some of the stocks out here kind of holding or being positive as Coca-Cola uh, looking for the safety stocks. I should have brought them. Safety dance. Do the safety dance. Anyway. Um, this going sideways out here, but a lot of times on a bound like that, that's better than nothing. Uh, other stocks out here that seem to be fairly interesting. A big W pattern um, with just a little bit uh, light down here on uh, Lie Automotive. Not much in the way out here. Just uh, know that uh, it was getting a lot of play on the ticker on uh, financial infotainment shows. Uh, other stocks that uh, kind of just hanging in there today on a bad hair day is Lockheed Martin. Uh, thinking that we're probably going to go to World War III if we continue poor policies that raise uh, crude prices for the people that hate us the most so they can fund a war against us. Probably not a great idea. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, your World War III stock right there. Uh, Lockheed Martin, but uh, not doing much out here. Uh, we'll take a look at some natural gas. Uh, at this point, everybody's just kind of shying away from anything. And again, probably the, the best part of a pullback like this or a bear market pullback is the stuff uh, that people probably shouldn't be selling gets sold and gives you an opportunity to get in. So you can look at it as a gift. Uh, back to kind of a long-term gap. We were talking about, I think this maybe a week or two ago, uh, where I would like to start looking at it, which is 125 to 120. I would love to see this thing blow out to about 122 uh, and uh, on a longer-term basis, but we'll see if anything happens on that. Uh, see what else do we have out here. Uh, in a big triangle formation, uh, we have McDonald's. Not exactly sure what this thing is winding up to do, but it should have a fairly large uh, move out of this. So you want to probably keep this one on your radar. Uh, let's go ahead and draw and mark this one up. Uh, you've got uh, the downside this way and kind of a actually a longer up. Well, let's do this. Longer upside this way. So you can kind of see where this thing's going. Uh, generally, the rule of thumb in these triangles, which have uh, lower highs and higher lows, uh, tend to break out if they get about three-fourths of the way in there. And this is a one of the triangle patterns you probably should keep a close eye on. I'm not exactly sure which way it's going to bust, but generally 80% of the time, the thing to do is fade the uh, break out, whichever one this goes or any way this actually goes. But Again, uh, narrowing uh, move on that one, which is interesting. OK, 
Okay. Oh, do we have them all? Let's go back to here. Okay. Other things going on. MongoDB. Uh, these tech starts, uh, stock continue to come back. Uh, today, you're down about 1.4 million shares against a 2.4 million share low. They're probably better fish in the sea. This one does look a little weaker. I'm wondering about Oracle on that. And this that Oracle may move that tomorrow. So after you get the uh, results on Oracle tonight, you may want to look, if you're looking for some way to play Oracle and not play it specifically, uh, probably it'll play be playing a little bit of a catch-up tomorrow. Now, uh, of stocks that I desperately hate, uh, Metamucil. Uh, the one that used to be known as fascist book or fake book or all the other epitaphs that I cannot uh, put heap enough on for this company. Um, you got to be a little concerned out here if you're short. 71 million shares, and this is a company I hate, 71 million shares back on April 27th, 169 bucks. You went to 166.41 today. Now, it's not closing back above or in that trading range, but you'd probably have to look at that being in a bigger trading range if it does close above 169 in the next couple of days, and that trading range uh, to about 224. So you could be in a fairly nice one. Now, on this one, you had a lot of energy on the way up and a long uh, lower energy pullback to a low, and right now 20 million shares to 71. Um, this is a burning bush. So don't be surprised if I uh, decide to uh, hop on the Metamucil train here uh, if uh, we get any kind of pullback in the broader markets. Uh, I think this was should have been MRNA. NRA. We'll look at that. Uh, in these biotechs, you have now a fairly decent pullback. I would have liked a little bit lighter volume on busting the previous low. We'll see how the volume comes in at the end of the day. March 8th, you had uh, 6.7 million shares at 122. You've gotten a 115.61 today. Uh, the previous low at here on the 12th of May was 7 million shares. So you're really not coming in light on that. When we come back, we'll get into the next segment. Microsoft, Micron, Netflix, NVIDIA, Oracle, uh, and yeah, and more. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, Microsoft on the screen here. May 20th, you had 40 million shares at uh, 246 bucks. You got to 243 this morning. Uh, you're at 244 now. So doing half the volume with an uh, hour and 15 minutes left. Uh, you do have three nice gaps down. And this last one was a big one. I'm suspecting that this is... Uh, going to probably go sideways for a couple of days. But uh, you know what? On a Wyckoff model, doesn't look that bad. Uh, other things going on here. Micron uh, is back to a long-term gap higher. That gap was up on 31 million shares on November 16th of 2020. So back to the pandemic low. Uh, what uh, was the volume that I say there? 31 million shares. Uh, we're into that with about half the volume today of 14.5. Now, no Fed. I'd be long right at this moment. Fed, I know we're probably going to go sideways. Maybe we get some bounces, then it gets sold off again. But my guess is that even uh, on the Fed, they're probably going to drive bears are foaming at the mouth rabid. Uh, they're probably, whatever the Fed does, they're probably going to start shorting out the yin-yang. That's a technical term, by the way. Out the wazoo, another uh, technical term. Uh, and the, you may get one more 30-minute window, maybe even on Thursday or Friday. You're going to get a window, I think, where everybody decides to get dissed, the end of the world ish and generally on light volume a fairly good place to go uh, with a three-day weekend going ahead of it as i said you might have a really good snapback right now options would point to a snapback being at about four thousand on the uh, s p cash so we could have a nice you know 200 point run i don't see a lot lower out here if i was uh, short at the moment i'd probably be taking my money and waiting uh, for a big fat pitch after the Fed meeting, but uh, just my two cents on it. Okay, Netflix. Uh, to do, do. Okay. Uh, last low on Netflix was uh, almost 18 million shares on May 12th at 162. Uh, today, you got to a low of 169. I still think you're going to retest that 162, and I'd love to get it retested on lighter volume. 17 million to 6.5. You may not get it. You're in the candle right now. NOC, uh, again, uh, you're uh, into the world, uh, World War III trade going sideways out here today or yesterday. It had a big sign up here at the top with a 2.4 million share uh, high getting tested with 900,000 shares, telling you that the top was in for a while. Support comes in at about 430. That's where the big money would probably be. NVIDIA also 
testing lows. And it's 71 million share low of May 12th at 155 with 71 million shares by 41 million shares today other than the gap. Now with two gaps, again, I'd love to see some of these gap down one more time and, and finish up a three gap play to the downside. Uh, not exactly sure what would change, uh, but uh, don't have to. Just the chart patterns are out there. Uh, you've got three nice gaps down in Oracle, as I said, or uh, uh, you've got uh, earnings after the bell. You did bust the previous low of May 19th with more volume on Friday. Uh, so this is just a lighter volume move. Energy has been strong to the downside. You do have three gaps, depending on how you look at it. I would like to see one more gap in all of these to wash out anybody that would ever, ever think of selling any more shares ever, but may not get it. Palo Alto Networks uh, has been super strong. Uh, odor in everything, though. When you have the gap up on 520 on May 20th with 5.9 million shares, you're back into that with a million shares today. Uh, it, it, I would love for this to kind of rot on the vine and get down to about 460 from its uh, 481. Uh, and that would be a beautiful buy sign. PDD. Pindudu. I don't know if they thought about the name of this stock. Uh, but anyway, uh, nice move higher back to its uh, pop of 21 million shares back today on 14. Uh, it's got three gaps that it could go back and fill all the way to 30. PEP. Uh, -E uh, PepsiCo, another one of these uh, stocks in a bigger triangle pattern. Uh, and again, Lower highs, higher lows, uh, but uh, the safety stocks are hanging out there. Uh, Qualcomm, 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 Qualcomm. 11.4 uh, million share, low at 125.20. You're into that today with uh, 7 million shares. I think you're still probably going to get fairly close uh, to that. Well, you got 126. I think you're probably still going to get another opportunity to get it maybe 128. Out here, the volume off the highs was fairly light. So not as bad as one might think if you look at the indexes. The SMH itself, uh, not quite the blowout, but it has two gaps down. I would love to get see the third gap out of this thing and, and to really size it up. You do kind of have, if you go back and look at this, uh, the gap down from the 6th of Mar or April, excuse me. So you could possibly have the end of a three-gap play here. I would just like to see the volume uh, on a push uh, on a washout even decrease a little more over the next couple of days and a close above 215 with a whole lot less, maybe 4 million shares uh, into the next couple of days, which are probably going to be very light volume, by the way. So if you just a straight look at the charts, uh, interesting. Syn uh, synaptics, I don't see much in this. Of course, the TLT never got back up to 122. I thought maybe you'd get up there before and start another ABC down. A monster gap down to 109.78. And I don't know what you say about it other than that. Uh, dogs and cats living together. Real wrath of God stuff. Seas boiling, blood raining from the sky. A little bit of everything here with the TLT and bonds. T row price, uh, if you're looking at uh, what the uh, brokers are doing, uh, there's a lot of these kind of uh, gaps and then gaps on this leg. I'd love to see, again, one more gap lower. The volume's not all that exciting, but I don't think much is going on in that. Uh, questions about Tesla, a lot of them today in the email. Uh, the downside, like I said, is probably uh, back to this 539 back here on March 5th. There's just too much competition uh, coming into a market uh, this year uh, that's going to have higher interest rates, tough to get in cars, and you're going to have a real option to buy something less than $100,000 for Tesla. 
you're going to be able to buy Kias for what? For Hyundai for 50 grand. I think that's going to bring a lot of attention to it. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return to wrap up the day, we have couple of questions. Uh, AMLP, question is whether or not you hang on to it or not. I think this is in a big trading range from 42 to 36 and a half. Um, so I don't know. Let that be your guide. It's hard to get uh, incredibly bearish on energy. Um, I'm going to say that energy is probably going to be very strong until uh, we have a change in Congress where we're probably going to have uh, probably the most lenient Congress and uh, the most obstructive executive branch uh, when it comes to uh, domestic production. I'm not exactly sure who's going to win, but I have a feeling that uh, you may end up with a super majority, at least on this energy sector, if they get as walloped as everybody says they're going to uh, on uh, high gas prices, uh, which I think is about 80% of our uh, inflation, too. So, that's one policy that could take care of about 80% of all our problems. But, uh, you know, when you're in a, uh, a group of folks that think that they have some kind of hidden knowledge that the rest of the world doesn't have, uh, it's fairly easy to get the bunker mentality 
uh, even though it's going to uh, lead to probably the worst results and outcome uh, that you could think of. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, second question out here. On a three-gap play, would you like to see volume taper off for Climax? Um, I see a couple of things. Generally, you see light volume, but a lot of times on that third gap, you see monster volume. And it just turns around within the day. So to me, it's a bigger issue of actually getting the third gap down. And any kind of thing that makes you think that that's just overdone. Generally, you get a lot of volume, and then uh, it just turns around when everybody throws the baby out with the bath. So when you can, as I've said, not when you have to, be back tomorrow like a bad rash. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.